So hi everyone, I hope you're well and staying calm, peaceful, positive. So now you can let go of the past. Don't worry about the future and remain in the present moment as much as you can. During the chanting, as well as in the meditations and also for the Dharma talk. So let's uh, get into the chanting straight away. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Udham saranam gachami Dhammam saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Dudayam bi buddham saranam gachami Dudayam bi dhammam saranam gachami Dudayam bi sangham saranam gachami Tadayam bi buddham saranam gachami Tadayam bi dhammam saranam gachami Tadayam bi sangham saranam gachami Namo buddhaya, namo dharmaya, namo sanghaya Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May they be free from suffering and its causes. May they never be parted from their happiness beyond suffering. May they abide in equanimity, free of bias, attachment to the near and aversion from the far. I shall cause this great compassionate Buddha, please inspire me to be able to do so. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind and present clouds of every types of offerings, actual and mentally transformed. I confess all of my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in all the virtues of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until cyclic existence ends and turn the wheel of Dharma for all sentient beings. I dedicate the virtues of myself and others to the great enlightenment. However innumerable all sentient beings are ever to save them all, However inexhaustible my delusions are about to extinguish them all. However immeasurable the Dharma teachings are about to master them all. However endless the Buddha's way is about to follow it completely. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Tayata umgate gate paragate parasam gate bodhi soha. 
Tayatam gati gati para gati para sam gati bodhisoha. Tayatam gati gati para gati para sam gati bodhisoha. <coughs> so now get yourself comfortable for the meditation practices. Initially to release the tension from the body. Then we'll do the breath meditation as per usual, followed by the loving kindness meditation. Remember, we need to be kind to ourselves, not only in the loving kindness meditation, but throughout all of the meditations, giving ourselves the opportunity to release tension, <clears throat> to focus on the one object or the breath in this case, to develop the concentration. And then also to radiate, not only generate in your own mind, but radiate outwards this love and kindness. We need to be kind to ourselves throughout all of this practice. And in fact, throughout all of our lives. When we are kind to ourselves, we can be genuinely kind to others. So now bring your mind inside your body, starting at the bottom of the body, working your way to, from the feet to the shoulders, and then down again to your fingers, and then back up to the top of your head. Release whatever tension you have in the body. You can just do this with your mind, or if you find that a little bit difficult, you can take a deep in-breath and release the tension on the long out-breath or you can even manipulate your body a little. So now do this for a few, a few moments in silence. And when you've completed this, scan your body once more, just to see if you can release any more tension. And now place your mind on your breath. Breathing in your nose. Focus on the feeling of the breath as you breathe in your nose, passes the throat, goes past the chest area and fills your lungs. So breathe, breathe all the way into your lungs and then back out your nose again. If any thoughts arise as you're doing this, if you have some sort of agitation mentally or distraction, such as thoughts or feelings and the like, don't cling to them. Don't grasp at them. Don't try to force them away or deny them, but let them go naturally by replacing your mind back onto your breath. And it's likewise, if your mind starts to become dull or sleepy, then wake it up a little bit by refocusing on your breath, this time more brightly. So replacing your mind back onto your breath or refocusing is the antidote for both the agitated, overthinking mind, as well as the dull mind. So let's practice like this for a few minutes in silence.
So now we can feel very pleased with ourselves for engaging in this practice. Allowing ourselves the opportunity to improve our concentration. With improved concentration, we are able to focus on an object for longer periods of time. Whether that be to further develop and improve our concentration, or whether it is to utilize our ability to investigate and analyze, contemplate something or phenomena alike, to develop more insight into the nature of things, to develop more understanding uh, that all conditioned phenomena are impermanent, have the nature of being unsatisfactory, and that there is no independent self to be found anywhere. And even that nirvana or enlightenment is unconditioned and therefore free from these. So fill ourselves with universal loving kindness, generating it in our own mind or heart and filling our whole being with this universal loving kindness. Accepting ourselves, even forgiving ourselves, being friendly to ourselves, harmless, non violent, honest, and other good qualities like these are all included within metta or universal love and kindness. You've filled yourself with so much loving kindness that it now overflows and radiates outwards initially to your loved ones, your family, your friends, and fills them with the universal loving kindness. Have the wish that they be happy, free from suffering, and that they be peaceful. You can even visualize that they are happy now that they are free from suffering and that they are peaceful. And gradually radiate further and further. Let's now include those we may regard as strangers. That we feel some sort of indifference towards. May they also be happy, free from suffering and be peaceful. And now also to those we may regard as enemies, those people that we find very difficult, maybe even fear them or feel some sort of anger towards them. Now let's generate and radiate this loving kindness towards them as well. May all of these people be happy, have the causes of happiness, be free from suffering, and free from engaging in the causes of suffering. And may they be at peace with themselves, others, and all that surrounds them. Now we will gradually radiate this loving kindness out further and further distance wise, initially to all of those beings around your immediate area. All the beings, whether they live on the land or under the land, in the waters, fly through the air, born from wombs, from eggs, from moisture, or through transformation. Like a tidal wave of loving kindness, radiating further and further, let's now have it pervade our whole state or county. And other states and counties throughout our whole country.
and other countries throughout the whole world. Initially, those that you have an affinity towards, as well as those you feel indifference towards or don't know about. And even those that you may have, for whatever reason, some sort of negative feelings towards, until your loving kindness pervades this whole planet. Loving kindness to all living beings in this world. and other worlds throughout the whole solar system and other solar systems throughout the galaxy and other galaxies throughout the universe and beyond until your loving kindness pervades throughout infinite space, unlimited, immeasurable loving kindness, whilst also being present here and now to recite the dedication prayer. Due to this merit, may I soon attain the enlightened state of the Buddha, so that I may be able to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering. May the precious body, Chita, not yet born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. And may the precious view of Shunyata, not yet born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. So now, as you know, we will continue our discussion or commentary, commentary on the metta or karaniya metta sutta, the Buddha's teaching on universal loving kindness. Of course, we've already covered where this was taught, when and why it was taught, how it was taught at that time, as well as had a couple of overviews, part one and part two overviews of the whole sutra and the parts of the sutra that relate predominantly to what qualities. For instance, the first verse relates predominantly to morality. We covered that. The second and third verses relate predominantly to the meditation and absorbing your mind with this loving kindness. We've covered that. And also the fourth verse relating predominantly to wisdom or insight. And we've also covered that. Uh, had, have an overview of these. Okay, so now we will start to dissect them um, individually. So the, obviously the first one is morality. So that's ob obviously abstaining from anything harmful um, of the body, speech and the mind, any engaging in um, only good things that bring benefit. Do, as the Buddha said, uh, don't do anything harmful. Do only good, purify your mind. And so uh, we will start to talk about this in detail um, today and probably next week as well, and then move on to the next part, which is the meditation part. So I will um, recite the first verse as I have it. As I mentioned to you, I'll just remind you, if you're looking at the Pali version of this uh, sutra, then um, I think it comes in 10 verses. But for the sake of um, convenience, you could say, but also to fit into the song that I wrote for this, the universal love song, um, I put it into four verses. Okay, so I thought that was uh, easier for um, to fit in with the music and the time, the tempo and things like that. Okay, so this is the work for those who are skilled and peaceful, who seek the good. May they be able and upright, honest of gentle speech and not proud. May they be content and easily supported, unburdened with their senses calmed. May they be wise and not arrogant and without desire for the possessions of others. May they do nothing mean or that the wise would reprove. Okay, so now uh, we'll have a look at each part of that. So this is the work. What does it mean by work? Obviously the Dharma practice. Um, as the Buddha said, I'll repeat again, do no evil or don't do anything harmful, do only good, do only things that bring benefit, and purify your mind. So train your mind. You could say in the beginning, it's like taming the mind, and then training the mind, and then transforming the mind, eventually, with the wisdom aspect, transcending the, the ordinary mind, the conditioned mind. And so, I actually re reposted that teaching of mine, the very short cryptic teaching, 
uh, of those four, what I call the four T's. So it's taming the mind, so it's stilling the mind, um, then training the mind, putting the Dharma practice um, into practice, the Dharma, the meditation is specifically into practice, and then uh, transforming the mind by because we are allowing ourselves the opportunity to know what to adopt and what to abandon, adopting or abandoning first the unwholesome states of mind and so forth, and then adopting the good qualities that lead towards happiness and lead towards enlightenment. And then, of course, transcending all of these, transcending the opposites, transcending the duality. And so that's what I mean by transcending the mind. So once again, I repeat, tame the mind, distill the mind, train the mind by practicing the Dharma and practicing meditation, then transforming the mind once again by practicing the Dharma, practicing all of the aspects, the Lord of the methods of the Dharma, and then transcending the conditioned mind, the mind that is always going back and forth um, based on duality, based on concepts, dualistic thinking, conceptual thinking. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So this is the work. <clears throat> that's what is meant by this is mentioned um it mentioned that's what mean meant by mentioning this first up is that we're actually practicing the dharma excuse me so this is the work for those who are skilled in other words we are now even if we're just starting out on the dharma practice on our dharma path then we are skilled to whatever level we're at okay but also as we traverse the dharma path as we make our way on our journey towards what we call enlightenment to the pure mind transcending the mind then we develop more and more skill and been able to do so we create the momentum to be able to do so okay so this is what the Buddha meant by the skilled. Now, we can also include the skills, the worldly skills too, because obviously we have to survive physically as to enable ourselves to be able to practice the Dharma. So for instance, let's uh, something as simple as growing your own vegetables, for instance, so that you have good nutritious diet, um, or at least having some education on what it is you need to eat to remain healthy physically then this is, uh, relies upon skill to be able to do so, knowledge and skills. So knowledge, knowing about it, and then put it into practice um, skillfully. And it's the same with your whatever work you choose to do, if you choose to do that, um, or studies and the like. We have to be skilled at being able to study. We have to, um, to develop the knowledge and vice versa. And also in relation to the type of work we do, um, we should be skilled. And of course, we should be skilled in that which is harmless, not harmful, that is beneficial and that is not lacking benefit in the right direction, in other ways, in other words. Okay, so that's what the Buddha meant by that. Uh, this is the work for those who are skilled and peaceful. So even if we're not totally peaceful yet, we are working our way towards being peaceful. I remind you what I mentioned last week, and I think the week before as well, is we need to be moral, as well, of course, as meditation practice, engaging in that to develop the insight. But we really need to be moral to be able to develop this genuine, genuinely develop this universal loving kindness. I think that, that should be really obvious. If we're not moral, if we're, if we're unwholesome, unwholesome states of mind, if we're engaging in uh, bad actions, harmful actions of the speech and of the body, then how can you say that we can be loving and kind? It's the opposite. So that's why we need to develop this morality uh, in this case, as we're working to develop this universal love and kindness. Okay. Um, so being peaceful, we're working our way to being pe more peaceful 
if uh, quite often I say um, that if we practice well, if we practice the Dharma well in all of the aspects, such as morality, and then we will improve, constantly improve. So therefore today, we will be better than yesterday. But if we continue to practice correctly, consistently, constantly, then today we won't be as good as tomorrow. So we continue to practice, continue to improve, okay? And even if you're, you're a very advanced practitioner, even if uh, for the high level body suffers, they still have to improve because not Buddha yet, um, okay? But of course, a lot of the high level body suffers, they have created so much momentum and have this bodhicitta intention and uh, also the uh, wisdom of emptiness as well. Of course, now they're, they're perfecting the higher, higher states, higher qualities as well. So maybe we can't compare ourselves to them yet, only be inspired by them, uh, be motivated by them. And so uh, skilled and peaceful. So obviously we're working our way towards being more peaceful, having more peaceful in the sense of being harmless, nonviolent, uh, being more honest to ourselves and to others and everything around us and uh, not reacting so much. So in other words, we're being proactive in being more peaceful. Um, so I'll repeat that, that line. This is the work for those who are skilled and peaceful who seek the good. So even though we're not perfect yet, we're working our way towards being good. First of all, by abstaining from harming as mentioned, and then working our way towards being good and engaging in virtuous deeds, good deeds consistently and eventually constantly. We should do this more and more. And as we do so, we will rejoice in this. It feels good. It feels good to abstain from harming, even though it may be a habit that we've had for so many lifetimes in certain areas. It may be difficult to do, but it feels good to let it go. There's no guilt anymore. There's no regrets. And then engaging in beneficial actions of the mind, the body, and the speech, this gives rise to rejoicing, gives rise to enthusiasm and true joy, or what we can call dharma pitti. So joy in the practice of the dharma and is in the results of the dharma practice as well. So I think that will do for that part. So I'll just repeat it, that, that line. This is the work for those who are skilled and peaceful who seek the good. You can contemplate on this in your own time, in your own meditations, and even um, through your books, whatever uh, study materials you have, even listening to other teachers give talks, reviewing and rehearing this class and other classes that are related. Um, or Googling. Um, but once again, I remind you, just be careful with Googling. It's not all of the information is that accurate. There is a lot of accurate information, though. And um, obviously, you should Google um, genuine Dharma sources, you know, so the websites that are, you know, really good and tested. And so anyway, um, you can do that. And you can also, once again, ask questions on this, but contemplate on that line. So that's a little bit of homework for you during this commentary on this Metta Sutta. Okay, so each line I may say to you, contemplate this line. And then you should do it, even if it's only five minutes. I want you to absorb your mind with this teaching. And so therefore, uh, you'll be able to access it at all times because it'll be in your mind whenever you want it there. Um, the next line says, may they be able and upright honest, of gentle speech, and not proud. So may they be able, able to practice, once again, relates to skilled, having good knowledge, the right knowledge, um, and upright. In other words, doing nothing wrong now, or at least if doing something wrong, we recognize it. If we engage in some negative actions, we straight away apply the antidotes, having positive regret, resolving to do our very best not to do it again. And then having in our mind the thoughts of the Buddha, of the Bodhisattvas, Arhans, your teachers, 
and also engaging in this practice and slowly uh, slowly improving ourselves over time. Sometimes we will improve very quickly, you know, because we're putting the effort and, and engaged in the practice, but sometimes it may take a little bit more effort as well. We need to be very patient with ourselves with this. And so uh, maintaining an upright mind as much as possible. Upright can also mean, uh, well, a concentrated mind, a mind where that is mindful uh, of the, the body, the mental feelings or sensations, the mind itself and the activities and actions of the mind. And also being aware, having as close as we can to pure awareness and being conscientious. Um, then also being honest. Uh, I mention this so often. We need to be honest to ourselves. Otherwise, we're going to kid ourselves all the time. And this obviously cannot lead uh, along the Dharma path in the right direction. So we need to be honest to ourselves as well as honest to others. And especially honest towards the thought of the Buddha and virtuous beings and your teachers and the like. Um, of gentle speech and not proud. So this relates obviously to our speech in this case. Um, so with practicing honesty with your speech, not lying, but telling the truth, having been speaking gently, you know, and skillfully, engaging in meaningful discussions with others when you speak and creating the habit to do so. So obviously avoiding telling lies, avoiding slandering, avoiding engaging in speech that is harsh and using abusive language and also avoiding gossip. And I remind you, instead, engaging in speech that is truthful, speaking to unite, speaking, speaking with good meaning to, to develop and also to um, create, you could say, um, good communication using skillful language, sweet language. And so the next line says, and not proud. And so don't just speak or act with your body or even all the way into your mind to just try to impress others. You know, don't have this pride that stops you from practicing the Dharma, stops you from being honest to yourself and so forth. It's kind of like puts up a block um, hinders our insight, hinders our ability to perceive what is truthful and so forth. Okay, so obviously I've mentioned in the past quite a few times the, the negative things of pride or negative effects of pride. And um, I'll just briefly mention them again. If you have this pride and you cling to this pride, especially if you cling really strongly, intensely to this pride, it can give rise to arrogance very quickly. It can give rise to low self-esteem and it can give rise to unhealthy competitiveness. And I won't go on with that because I think most of you um, understand this uh, very clearly. We only have a minute and a half to go. Um, so I think that I just repeat the next, repeat that line and, and encourage you to contemplate on this line as well. So contemplate the first line and then contemplate the second line uh, separately. So may they be able and upright, honest of gentle speech and not proud. The next line says, may they be content and easily supported. So being contented and easily supported. We'll talk about this next week, but I'll introduce you to it now. Contented mind. So often I think we, we think that we get contented when we get what we want. But when we get what we want, so often this leads to more attachment and less contentment. So often we may think that we are contented when we don't get what we don't want. But once again, this increases our aversion to things such as not getting what you uh, don't want. Okay, so I think I'll leave it there. I encourage you to practice well and be patient with me. I'm dissecting these in detail and you may hear some repeated teachings.